Uh, in this video, I'm gonna be explaining this important uh, paper, which is called Improving Discriminative Learning for Zero-Shot Relation Extraction. And uh, this paper in 2022. And of course, these are positive samples. They are related to that article. But what is the problem? Zero-shot relation extraction aims to predict target relations that cannot be observed during training. Uh, we call them unseen data or unseen. For example, in the context of entity linking, we say un unseen entities. Uh, in the context of relation extraction, we call them unseen relations. So it depends on your uh, problem. While most previous studies have focused on fully supervised relation extraction and achieved considerably high performance, less effort has been made towards zero-shot relation extraction. The supervised models cannot extract relations that are not predefined or observed during training, while many new relations always exist in real-world scenarios. Thus, it is worth enabling models to predict new relations that have never been seen before. So the approach is that they use a self-adaptive comparator network to judge whether the relationship between a sentence and a relation is consistent. This verification process helps the model to learn more discriminative embeddings. So we have a couple of seen la relation labels and unseen relation labels. So unseen relations, they are not seen in the training, so they are different. So there is no intersection of these data. And so this is the architecture where the total loss is the loss of the F comparator, this comparator, the loss of sentences and relations and we will talk about it. So we have a couple of N sentences and K relations. Doesn't matter if it is seen data or unseen because the relation, we want to see them in the space. And for sentence encoder, from the input sentence, we add four entity marker tokens to annotate two entities. Then we tokenize and input them through a pre-trained BERT encoder. Finally, we obtain a vector representation, the relation between them, the two entities, by concatenating the two vectors of the star tokens. For relation encoder, most relations are well defined and their descriptions are available from open source, so they use uh, wiki, wiki data for their descriptions. Modeling consistency of relationship between sentence and relation. So F, that F that I said is a comparator. It's a two-dimensional nonlinear neural network in which the hidden layer is equipped with the 10, 10 edge nonlinearity. And the output uh, layer is, uh, is outfitted with the sigmoid function. So we feed them to the sentence encoder and uh, so relation, uh, the, the K corresponding descriptors of K relations are fed into relation encoder and subsequent uh, nonlinear projector. So they introduce uh, the learning constraint uh, and they concatenate pairs from two spaces and use that comparator to judge whether the relation between a sentence and relation is consistent. So they consider three main goals in training, discriminative sentence embeddings and discriminative relation embeddings and effective uh, uh, comparator approach. So loss for seen relation classifier is a standard. Everybody knows how to deal with seen relations. Just, we just use a simple so a multi-class relation classifier. Uh, and you know the similarity distance between two sentences can be uh, used, can, we can use this formula for the similarity. 
So clearly this value should be small for any sentence pair of the same relation. We call them positive pair and large for negative pair. We then apply such distance constraints on all t unordered sentence pairs and we formulate the loss like this. So I I enjoy, it, if it if this one is one if this indicator is one, it means that S I and S J is positive, otherwise it is zero. So we consider both positive things and the negative things. And finally, we we add it we add this loss to the previous slide that I was talking about softmax that standard supervised learning. And for unseen data, for unseen relations, we use that, uh, we want to, I mean, the relate, this is the distance between, the similarity distance between the two relations with this equation. And so we have K different relations in the relation embedding space. And from K relations, we have K times K minus two, one, uh, but uh, half of that for a, where, where each pair includes two different unordered relations. And finally, loss for comparator networks, because we have concatenated them, now we want to know which one goes to which one. So we also add this uh, comparator loss as well. So the total loss becomes a linear combination of the, so this, it's a multi-objective, but we do scalarization in this multi-objective optimization, but just a linear combination of these losses. So the relation loss could be a factor, a sentence loss, and finally, this. Uh, the most important thing is this comparator, because we want to know the task. We want to handle the task, which is assigning which, which one goes to which one, which relation goes to which sentence. And this is the total loss. So at the test time, they conduct zero-shot learning prediction by comparing the similarity score of a given sentence with all unseen semantic relation representations. And they, they classify a sentence S sub i to the unseen relation that has the largest similarity score among relations. And the data set that they use is Wiki zero shot learning and few relations. And uh, so you see that the number of instances, number of relations of, uh, for example, Wiki knowledge base is, is higher, the number of relations and the average length. And these are the results that you see precision, recall and F1 score for this data set wiki. And for another data set FURL, uh, we have precision recall and F1 score. Uh, you see that um, the state of the art is 86%. But for 10 mentioned, for 10, for M equal to 10, number of uh, randomly see, uh, selected relations as unseen one, you can see that uh, it should go naturally, it's, it's very logic that if we increase those unseen labels, then our task becomes difficult. That's why you see a trend that is decreasing, decreasing from this one to this one, decreasing another 10%. So it's very natural because the problem becomes harder and harder and you're reducing the seen relations and, and increasing the unseen relations relatively so that's why it seems natural 